Oh, God, it's Americano again, ruining everyone's day with this stupid paleontology video. It's called, Even Dinosaurs Were Afraid of This Creature. Spoiler alert, there are multiple creatures. When it comes to terrifying creatures, there's not much worse than a lizard the size of an apartment building racing across the earth devouring everything in its path. Only when it's hungry. If it's not, it'll just leave you alone. I'm talking about dinosaurs, of course. But they've been dead and gone for 65 million years, so we can breathe easy. Or can we? From the cat that takes no prisoners to the shark that looks like a buzzsaw, here's 20 animals that were scarier than dinosaurs. Depends on your definition of scarier, and also, you're just overgeneralizing everything. Scarier than what dinosaurs? T-Rex? <sighs> After the PTSD that was me watching the worst paleontology video ever uploaded to YouTube, oh boy, this is not gonna be fun. Number 20, Canada Lynx. Dude, how is a Canada Lynx scarier than a dinosaur? It's actually quite cute. And they might not have lived at the same time, but I'll bet even dinosaurs were afraid of these guys. Dude, it'll probably just get crushed by most dinosaurs. The only dinosaurs that are going to be terrified about it is very small dinosaurs like Comsocanethus. Suddenly, lynx are everywhere in Anchorage. The number of snowshoe hares which lynx like to eat is at its highest right about now, which means they're probably going to be more lynx sightings. Hares have a natural population cycle that can last between 8 and 11 years. Me, don't bite me! Hey, ow, 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 ow! Okay, so I'm not going to criticize the aspect of adding modern creatures into this list. I mean, this is going to be a clickbait video anime. What do you expect? When there are a lot of hares, like there are now, there's a lot of lynx too. But these wildcats don't just live in Anchorage. You can find them all over Alaska, northern Canada, and even in some of the lower 48 states. You know, what bothers me is that this guy is not saying anything that has to do with this Canada Lynx being scary. But again, this is a clickbait video made by Americano, aka Brightside 2.0. Scientists didn't realize how far a lynx could migrate until recently, but in the last five years, scientists in the Northwest Boreal Lynx Project have seen proof that cats go on epic journeys that are longer and harder than anyone thought possible. One of the project's star travelers, who was called Hobo, left his home range in June of 2017 and traveled 2,174 miles by June of 2018. That's an impressive feat, not gonna lie, but it still has nothing to do with Canada Lynx being scarier than a dinosaur. He'd been through mountains and often powerful rivers, but it's still not clear why the cats go on such long trips. They're amazing voyagers and hella fluffy and cute. Just don't try to pet one if you like your eyes where they're supposed to be. This kitty got claws. Big claws. This video is just confusing me, I gotta be honest. The more I think about this video, the more confused I get. How far are we in now? Like, not even two minutes? Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button. Uh, no, never, and never will. Uh, please don't send any type of negativity towards Americano, please. This video is just for fun. I already said it in descriptions of my videos multiple times. Please don't. Thank you. And click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. This is just another cliché begging for like stuff. Number 19. Helicoprian. Okay, at least the dude sort of tried, unlike the Parasaurophilus from Clash of the Dinosaurs. And at least the dude also showed a more up-to-date depiction of the Helicoprian. When we go swimming in coastal waters, we thankfully no longer have to worry about the Helicoprian, a huge predator that went extinct about 250 million years ago. Um, it went extinct 20 million years earlier than that. Since we found a lot of its fossils, we've been able to put together a clear picture of it. And after it was found in Idaho, it was said that the huge fish was about 40 feet long. Which is just completely ridiculous. Even the highest estimate only reaches 26 feet. So this sea creature is twice as big as a great white shark. You mean twice as long as the great white shark, which is just wrong. 
Whoa. The nickname Buzzsaw Shark comes from the shape of the helicopterian's jaw and teeth. From the few bones and teeth that were found, people tried to figure out why the whirl of teeth looked like a buzzsaw. The whirl was moved to different parts of a fish's body before it was finally accepted in 2013 as a growth from the lower jaw that made this species a better predator. They also found out that the helicoprion wasn't a shark, but a type of ratfish. Actually, it's not a ratfish. The ratfish is part of the order of chimeriforms, which is known as the chimeras, which is part of the holocephali subclass, which contains the order of Eugeniodontida, where helicoprion is classified as part of, which is closely related to the chimeriforms, but ultimately is not chimeriforms, chimeras, and therefore not ratfish even though sharks and ratfish are related. Ratfish or not, when it was at its best, it was the most successful ocean predator and one of the strangest looking fish around. The helicoprion is not a ratfish. Come on, I explained it earlier. Number 18, Titanoboa. Did you even try pronounce it correctly this time? It's Titanoboa. Now whatever hell Titanoboa that you pronounce, a recent study has claimed that the world's biggest snake, which was as long as a school bus and as heavy as a small car, ruled tropical ecosystems just 6 million years after the feared Tyrannosaurus rex died out. A team of scientists from all over the world found some of the bones of the giant boa-like Titanoboa snake in Colombia. These bones are now on display at the Florida Museum of National History. Okay, so to be fair, Titanoboa, I would be terrified to see the Titanoboa. Actually, Titanoboa fits in this list because most dinosaurs, self-preservation instincts, they will just back off from the giant snake. Jonathan Block, a vertebrate paleontologist at the Florida Museum, says that the snake was between 42 and 45 feet long based on the size of the vertebrae that's been found. That would make the snake as long as Sue, the famous T-Rex on display at Chicago's Field Museum. In the movie Anaconda, a snake tried to eat Jennifer Lopez, but it wasn't even as big as the one that they found in real life. It's that crazy, this snake outsized even Hollywood's disaster movie imagination. As part of a Smithsonian promotion, a full-size model of Titanoboa was put on display in New York City's Grand Central Terminal, and I'm sure it scared a few people on the night trains. Okay, so this is one of the more agreeable ones on the list, but now I'm going to remind you, just bear in mind that we're going to have to sit through this clickbait for 24 minutes straight. Yes, this video is 24 minutes long. Number 17. The Pentacopterus decaherensis. Pentacopterus decaherensis. Also, it is not as scary as the Titanoboa in the fact that it could get crushed simply. The huge sea scorpion Pentacopterus, which was just found. Fossils were uncovered in 2010. It was described in 2015. Was named after a Pentaconter, one of the first Greek galley ships, all because of how it moved. A group of researchers from Yale University say that Pentacopterus lived 467 million years ago. More specifically, 467.3 to 458.4 million years ago, so this mistake is forgivable. It had a long head shield, a narrow body, and big grasping arms that it used to catch food. It could grow to be almost six feet long. It's the oldest Europterid that's ever been described. Europterids are aquatic anthropods like spiders, lobsters, and ticks. No, they're actually called sea scorpions. Where are you getting this spider lobster stuff from? Some random bright side clickbait? Geologists found the fossil bed near the upper Iowa River in northeastern Iowa, sunk in a meteorite crater. After that, by damming the river for a short time in 2010, the fossils were found and collected. Researchers found both adult and young Pentacopterus fossils in this site, with a ton of other amazing new fossils, and this gave them a lot of information about how the animal grew. The experts also said that the specimens were in very good shape. The fossil lay in layers of sediment where the sea filled a crater made by a meteorite impact that's about 5 kilometers across. 5.6 to be more specific. The low oxygen still waters at the bottom of the meteorite crater were able to keep the fossils in this amazing condition, and now we have the opportunity to learn so much more about how utterly terrifying things were in the past. Number 16. Hallucigenia Fortis. Okay, so it looks quite freaky, but it could just simply get crushed. Hold on, isn't that the same creature that was mentioned in the previous video? 
Hallucigenius is, or rather was, one of the strangest animals ever. It was an invertebrate, so it didn't have a backbone, kind of like an anthropod or a worm. However, it did have strong, sharp spikes sticking out of its back, which probably scared off potential predators. We don't know its proper usage, but considering the environment, its spike display, intimidate predators thing, thing is plausible. It also had claws that looked like tentacles and helped it move along the ocean floor. The strangest thing, though, is that the fossil of this tiny sea creature, which lived over 500 million years ago, showed it had no head and all of the fossils told the same story. It seems like an animal without a head would have trouble doing normal animal things like breathing and eating. But now new fossils found in Canada showed that the missing part was there all along. This shows us for the first time what Hallucigenia's face looked like, and it looked pretty weird. Weird but not scary. I find it quite fascinating to be honest. This video is about 20 creatures that even dinosaurs are afraid of, but as of now, most of them the dinosaurs are not scared of. Like, what do you mean dinosaurs? If you're talking about a velociraptor, then some might scare it, but just because a velociraptor is scared of it doesn't mean something like a T-Rex is scared of it. You're overgeneralizing everything. Okay, I said it again, but come on. Scientists carefully chipped away at the rock until they found a head in the shape of a spoon with some strange features. They were thrilled to see not only a pair of small eyes looking back at them, but also a cheeky half-moon smile under them. It looks like the fossil was smiling at us because it's been keeping its secrets about its appearance. Inside the creature's mouth, the researchers found a ring of teeth and another set of teeth that ran from its throat to its stomach. Which is scary, but I guess not as scary as just straight up not having a head. That creature not having a head is not scary in my opinion, it's just weird. Number 15. The Dunkleosteus. Did you even try pronouncing it correctly? Come on, Dunkleosteus, Dunkleosteus. Here it is, the Dunkleosteus. Every paleontologist is now crying because of you pronouncing Dunkleosteus this wrongly. Come on, Dunkleosteus, Dunkleosteus, Dunkleosteus. Um, I'm not sure about that pronunciation that you said. The most famous arthrodire placiderm fish of all time. This is a huge, strange looking fish that looks like a shark and a snake had a baby. It doesn't look like a fusion of those to me. They lived during the late Devonian period, between 358 and 382 million years ago, and grew to be about 30 feet long and 4.5 tons. Actually now a 2023 20, estimate puts it at around 3.41 to 5.23 meters, aka 11.2 to 17.2 feet in length. They could open and close those terrifying and huge jaws as fast as modern suction feeders and with more than 1,600 pounds of pressure, which is a lot of force. North Americans, Poles, Belgians, and Moroccans should be worried next time they go chill at a local waterhole since this terrible fish has only been found in these places. Dude, this Dunkleosteus is extinct a long time ago. People don't have to be worried about it. They should be fascinated about its existence. The fish was named after paleontologist David Dunkel, who's well known for his work on fossil fish. We know of 11 species in the genus. Uh, no, I only found like 9 or 10. But this one's the biggest and the scariest. Like the rest of its family, Dunkleosaurus. Bro, this is Dunkleosaurus from Jurassic World the Game, a hybrid of Mosasaurus and Dunkleosteus. Actually, I forgot to mention that Dunkleosteus is around 950 to 1200 kilograms. For a typical 3.41 meter long adult, aka 11.2 feet, and a mass of 1,500-1,750 kilograms for the largest 4.1 meter, 13 feet individual. It's had a two-part armed shell made of bone. This might have made it slow, but a strong swimmer. Instead of teeth, Dunkleosteus has two sets of sharp bone plates that form a structure that looks sort of like a beak. Like other placoderms, Dunkleosteus might have been the first vertebrates to fertilize its eggs inside of its body, just like some sharks do today. Now, to Americano's credit, there is quite a lot of positives in this video, but of course, there's always bound to be lots of problems. You know, this is Americano. This is not Goji Center or Red Raptor Rights or anything. Sure, Goji Center and Red Raptor Rights, they also have a little bit of problems here and there, but way less compared to that of Americano. Number 14. Anomalocaris. 530 million years ago. 520 to 499 million years ago. 
when the Cambrian explosion happened. The oceans were full of creatures that we don't know about today, but here's one that we do know about. The name Anomalocaris, which comes from the Greek word for unusual shrimp, was one of the most dangerous predators in those ancient waters. Yes, but when it comes to dinosaurs being 38 centimeters long, it's just a guaranteed death sentence. If it's caught by a dinosaur and eaten, it's just game over. There's Cambrian fossils of this huge extinct shrimp in the Burgess Shale in Canada. To be fair, it was gigantic for its time. Judging by its length and body build, I think it also has a fair bit of mass. As well as in the strata in China, Greenland, Australia, and Utah. These fossils show that this huge shrimp lived all over the world at that time and was therefore very successful. The fossils in the Burgess Shale show that the largest could grow to be six feet long. I tried to look up for it. No success. That's a big shrimp. Imagine all the gumbo you could get out of just one. Scientists have learned about how Anomalocaris moved and how it hunted by studying both its body parts and complete specimens. They had stalked eyes with thousands of lenses. To be exact, it's around 16,000. Which gave it vision that was clear as glass. The way it swam in waves suggested that it was a fast swimmer. The monster's monster, man, it's just another animal. Front legs were all covered up in sharp spikes that let it grab its prey once it caught up to it. It would have been a scary predator because it had good eyesight, moved quickly, and had sharp front arms. Or well, just simply get crushed if you're big enough. The mouth of Anomalocaris was made of 32 plates that stacked on top of each other. Some scientists say that this means it could easily crush prey. Number 13. Arctodus. How did you even misspell Arctodus, bro? It's just eight letters. The short-faced bear, Arctodus simus, was part of the Pleistocene megafauna that died out 11,000 years ago on the North American continent. Arctodus went extinct 12,000 years ago, but this is a minor mistake, so it's forgiven. The first people to live on this continent must have seen it, and the thought of running into a bear that was five feet tall at the shoulder is horrifying. I gotta admit, humans would be scared of this creature, and so would a lot of dinosaurs, actually. But to some, the Arctodus is still a teeny weeny baby. It was the perfect example of a big bad bear, but how bad was it really? There are some things about Arctodus that have become common knowledge, like that it had a short face, long limbs, and it ate more meat than grizzly bears do today. Its long legs in particular have been taken as proof that it ran down its unfortunate prey, though it wouldn't have been above running dire wolves or- Are we showing freaking Jurassic Fight Club right now? Because this looks and feels like Jurassic Fight Club. Every fight there occurs in the same setting, or settings that are ever so slightly different from others, but in turn, they still give out the same vibe. Saber-toothed cats off their kills either. But new research suggests that this huge bear also liked to eat his vegetables, so it might be best to think of it as a huge omnivore whose diet likely included different amounts of meat depending on what was available. With these guys running around, it surely would have been a terrifying time to be alive. Number 12, Mega Piranha. Being 10 kilograms in mass, no one is going to be afraid of it. Spino is just going to eat it. I'm just responding to the title of the video, okay? Mega Piranha is just as scary as the name makes it sound. Even though regular piranhas are scary enough, South American rivers used to be home to a much bigger species. Genus, not species. Called Mega Piranha. Between 10 and 8 million years ago, they lived in the Ituzaingo formation in Argentina. Ituzaingo! This guy is basically just generic American pronunciations in a nutshell. Okay, so let me try pronouncing it again. Ituzaingo! Let me know if I got it right or wrong, but at least I tried unlike that Americano. They were first discovered in 2009 and- You're now just using footage of a live animal instead of mega piranha. The researchers must have felt a chill when they found a 28 inch long piranha. At least the dude put in a more conservative estimate. They were thought to weigh about 22 pounds, which means that a whole school of these fish would have been a force to be reckoned with. Okay, I admit it. If there's a whole slew of them trying to attack the spino all at once, the spino would probably just back off. It's hard to imagine what would happen if you ran into one of those much bigger monster fish. The smaller modern cousins are known to be able to rip a cow apart in minutes. The force of a mega piranha's bite is about 1,070 pounds, which is about the same as a tiger. 
But there's still one problem with this conclusion. The only fossils of Mega Piranha are pieces of jawbone and a row of teeth from a single individual. So we're making a lot of jumps about how big it might have been, and this shows that there's still a lot to learn about this Miocene threat. Number 11, the Megalodon. Why is the Megalodon only number 11? Are you telling me that there's going to be some random small creatures like Pomona Scorpius or something that are going to be above the Megalodon? Here's a big fish that looks like a well-known fish from today. The Megalodon is the great-great-grandfather of the Great White Shark. Its name means Big Tooth, and it lived between 23 million and 3.6 million years ago. Okay, so they got it correct. I guess their level of clickbait is not as bad as that of Brightside, which is just absolute lie after lie. Even though we only have pieces of this shark, we've been able to put together a very scary picture of it. This shark is thought to have been one of the biggest and most dangerous predators in the world. The largest fossils come from sharks that could have been up to 67 feet long. This animal's bite could have been as strong as 41,000 pounds per square inch, which is enough to break a car in two. This was the ultimate apex predator because it was the only one that could catch the biggest fish in the ocean. Okay, what is that, a Leviathan? Bro, a Leviathan would have probably won against the Megalodon more times than Megalodon won against the Leviathan. I'm pretty sure the Megalodon wouldn't want to attack the Leviathan without second thought. Oh, I forgot that a Leviathan is a mammal. Sorry. It probably hunted whales, seals, and sea turtles, and it had a big impact on the environment. Fossil pieces have been found all over the world, so it was everywhere. Unlike the great white shark, it didn't try to attack the victim's soft underbelly. Instead, it just smashed through the victim's ribcage, broke all the bones, and crushed the heart in a devastating attack of strength and force. Number 10, the Gigantopithecus. How is the Gigantopithecus higher up on the list than freaking Megalodon? Actually, no, this list isn't even ordered, goddammit. The ape species Gigantopithecus did not- What are we even showing right now? Also, Gigantopithecus looks more like an orangutan than a gorilla, and the Gigantopithecus is most likely on all fours. Make it to modern times, which is something that we should all be thankful for, probably. If you ever had bad dreams about King Kong, then you don't want to meet this. King Kong looks more like a gorilla. Gigantopithecus looks more like an orangutan. A better comparison for Gigantopithecus would be just an orangutan. Ralph von Kollingswald was the first person to figure out that the giant ape lived in southern China between the early and middle Pleistocene. 20 years later, more bones were found and a clearer picture of our big cousin started to take shape. Once it was thought that Gigantopithecus was a hominin, which is the branch of apes that includes chimps. Now, however, it's thought to be a cousin of the orangutan. Which is still a hominid. Even though it ate plants, the huge primate looked like a gorilla. Again, it looked more like an orangutan. Come on, man. Stop saying that it looks more like a gorilla. And weighed about 660 pounds. Which is likely an overestimate. It's impossible to obtain a reliable body mass estimate without more complete remains. They went extinct about 300,000 years ago, most likely because of changes in climate, but it also could have been because of early humans. Since then, many strange stories about the Yeti and Bigfoot have been said to be based on Gigantopithecus. This made it one of the most hotly debated topics in cryptozoology. When you remember that some people say the big ape was 12 feet tall, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, which is based on an estimate in 1957. Number 9. Harpagornis moray. Basically Haas Eagle, so I'm going to call it Haas Eagle. Also, it is now called Hyraeus moray. The Haas Eagle, also called the Hyraeus moray. Did you even try to pronounce it correctly, man? Is an extinct species of eagle that used to live on the South Island of New Zealand. It's thought to have been the Po'akai of Maori mythology. It was the biggest eagle known to have ever lived. It weighed 33 pounds, which is just for female host eagles, while the harpy eagle, today's biggest, only weighs 20 pounds. It's thought that it grew to be so big because the moa, which can't fly, weighed up to 500 pounds and was its main food source. About the same sort of stuff happening to their bodies over Thanksgiving online, so I guess it's not impossible. What do you mean? You're just dragging out the video for views. 
The proposed increase in the weight of the average Haast eagles over time would have been the largest and fastest increase in average weight of any vertebrate species known. This was possible because there was a lot of big prey and not many other big predators. Even though they were very heavy, the eagles could have jumped off the ground because they had strong legs and a lot of muscles for flying. Number 8. Megalania Megalania. Man, your pronunciations are making everyone heartbroken right now. If every myth has some truth to it, then the Megalania is most likely where stories about dragons that breathe fire start. Clearly this video is for unaware kids that think they're learning a lot, when in reality they're only, the only thing they're learning is just complete bogus. The Komodo dragon's distant relatives would have grown to be 18 feet long and weigh more than 1,300 pounds. It's difficult to determine the size of the Megalania. A uh, leaner 710 pounds is an average one. Uh, maximal uh, 4,280 pounds and uh, 2009 estimate is 1,268. Megalania is the great-grandfather of the Komodo dragon. Great-grandfather? Bruh. It often ate large Australian marsupials, as well as giant flightless birds, and huge herbivorous Herbivorous. Dude, why are you- This mispronunciation is even worse than bright side, for God's sake. Turtles. It would have used its venomous bite to attack strong creatures. Megalania lived in the same environment as other monitor lizards, the marsupial lion Thylacolio. Thylacolio. Man, this is getting outrageous. Crocodiles like the Quincana, and snakes like the Wanambi, with which it competed and sometimes got along. Megalania probably made a lot of noise when it walked or moved. I mean, it's possible, but it's just a speculation. So it probably couldn't run after a prey. Research on living monitor lizards backs this up. Like modern lizards, it probably waited for its prey to walk by before jumping out and biting them with its strong jaws and venom. Like Komodo dragons and lace monitors, Megalania's venom probably killed its victim by shocking, paralyzing, and clotting the blood, which causes a lot of blood to be lost quickly. These venoms work quickly, but the size of prey changes how well they work. Number 7. Argavantis. What? What the fuck? Argavantis. Bro, Argentavis, how could you screw it up so bad? At least when Brightside misspelled stuff, they either added one letter or missed one letter. But how you pronounce it is an absolute monstrosity. How, how is this forgivable? Argentavis Magnificens. Argentavis? What do you mean Argentavis? This is complete stupidity at its finest. It's also called the giant Terratorn, which tells you a lot about how awesome and scary this huge bird was. It may have been the biggest bird that ever flew. Yes, it is. Pelagornis had the longer wingspan, but Argentavis is ultimately bigger. Argentavis is not the largest bird, though, but it is the largest flying bird. And most of its fossils have been found in Argentina. People have said that this bird's wingspan could have been as much as 26 feet. Which is a very outdated estimate. More recent estimates put the wingspan at around 16 feet, 8 inches to 21 feet, 4 inches. Which is crazy when you consider that the California condor has the biggest wingspan in North America at 9 feet, 8 inches. And the albatross has the biggest wingspan in the world at just over 12 feet. The giant Teratorn's body probably weighed up to 180 pounds, which is a lot for a bird. More fine techniques show a more typical mass of around 154 to 159 pounds. Still makes it the largest flying bird, though. About once every two years, these birds probably laid an egg that weighed about 2.2 pounds and was a little smaller than an ostrich egg. It's not surprising that scientists think this bird wasn't ever really eaten, since nothing on Earth could catch such a big bird. This means they mostly died of old age or illness. It probably took off from high places into headwinds, since it couldn't have flapped its wings for long enough or hard enough to fly like a regular bird. Number 6. Terror Birds. Which is the family of forest rackety. As you might expect, terror birds are scary. 
between about 62 million and 1.8 million years ago. 53 to 0.1 million years ago. These huge birds lived. Even though they were from South America, their only large predator from South America that's known to have crossed Panama into North America by land, as these birds were flightless. Whatever was living in North America at the time probably wasn't happy to see so many of them come over because these monsters could grow to be 10 feet tall. What is that terrible with those extremely freaky arms? Why aren't they like feathered and on the side of their body? They had a beak like the one you showed here. Beak that looked like an eagle's and was 18 inches long and curved into a razor sharp hook. They were also very agile and fast, moving up to 30 miles per hour. They couldn't bite hard enough to catch big animals, so they probably stuck to easy to kill prey like rabbits. However, some experts disagree and say that the Smilodon and the Great White Shark are examples of top predators with weak bites. It could have used its beak as a knife to cut into the big necks of animals before killing them with its huge claws. Now this is possible by the looks of it, however, its beak may have ripped the flesh of the body of other animals. This is all very frightening. Thankfully, they're long gone now. Number 5. Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus was an extinct type of whale. It lived between 40 and 34 million years ago. Oh, glad they realized that Basilosaurus was an ancient whale. When it looked like a long snake that could grow to be more than 60 feet long. It only applies to Basilosaurus at Toides at around 50, 60, 66 feet long. Actually, Basilosaurus isis is over 60 feet long, it's around 49 to 59 feet long. Basilosaurus had a number of features that made it stand out. Vestigial, but much shorter hind limbs, which were probably not useful for moving the animal, but could have been used as a guide during mating. Extremely long vertebrate like those of snakes, and a skeleton structure that showed it moved like an eel. Basilosaurus didn't have the melon organ that modern whales and dolphins use to find their way by echolocation. This means that it probably couldn't dive very deep. Another thing correct. Wow, what a surprise. Basilosaurus fossils were found for the first time in Louisiana. Since then, more have been found in Egypt and Pakistan as well as the US. How Basilosaurus was found is an interesting story in itself. Supposedly, fossils of this animal were so common in Alabama and Louisiana in the 19th century that people used the bones to make furniture. On the other hand, a bunch of these fossils were taken to the American Philosophical Society so Dr. Richard Harlan could look at them. Harlan looked at the fossils and decided they were from reptiles. Which is now quite wrong, now they belong to the mammals. He gave the species the name Basilosaurus, which means king lizard or king reptile in Greek. Later, a paleontologist called Sir Richard Owen looked more at the samples and found that the animal was, in fact, a sea mammal. But the name stuck, and so it's called a giant lizard whale now. Number 4. Thymolacosmilus. Hold on, can you try again, please? Thymolacosmilus. Thymolacosmilus. I have no words. Thylacosmilus. You spelt it correctly, so how could you screw the pronunciation so bad? This is the worst attempt at pronouncing Thylacosmilus. And probably the worst pronunciation mistake in this video. With its big front teeth, Thymolacosmilus. Oh my god, this pronunciation is just making me cry. Because of this abomination of pronunciation, paleontologists are going to have a nightmare for weeks. This looked a lot like a saber-toothed cat, such as the Smilodon. The main difference between these two kitties is that the saber-toothed cats were placental mammals, which means that they grew young inside their mothers while still attached to the placenta by an umbilical cord. Thymolacosmilus. Thymocosmilus, on the other hand, has a pouch where its young, called neonates, were born when they were still very young and stay until they're ready to go out on their own. Thylacosmilus. Okay, finally, they pronounce it properly, but come on, bro. How many attempts? Thylacosmilus, 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 okay. Jeez. Thank you. It looked like a cat with saber-toothed teeth, but it was actually related to kangaroos and the now extinct thylacine, which is also called the Tasmanian tiger. Thylacosmilus might have used its huge teeth in the same way that saber-toothed cats did. They could have caught its prey by hiding in the bushes or by jumping onto it from above. During these sudden attacks, they might have given a deep bite to a weak spot like the neck, cutting off arteries and causing a lot of blood to flow out quickly. Even though it's not impossible that they might have hunted together, they're usually shown as a solitary hunter or even a scavenger. Number 3. Archaeotherium. Archaeotherium. Okay, that's not 
as bad as that Thalaka Smiles pronunciation mistake, but uh, still. Archaeotherium was named for the first time in 1850, and it's still one of the best known fossil entelodonts. And even though entelodonts are often compared to pigs, especially warthogs, most paleontologists think they're actually more closely related to mammals like hippos. They're also- I think I can tell this is entelodon from Jurassic World, a game. They're called terminator pigs, or hell pigs, which should probably give you an idea what kind of animal- I can tell this is Jurassic Park Builder, this is Deodon, not entelodon or archaeotherium. Archaeotherium is a bit more blue, while entelodon is a bit more red. What we're talking about here. It lived in North America at a time when primitive horses, camels, and rhinos roamed the land. Okay, so this is Archaeotherium from Jurassic World the game. And Creodonts were the only real- This is the Archaeotherium from Jurassic Park Builder, both made by Lutia themselves. And these Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World games, they aren't exactly that accurate to paleontology. So, it's best not to use them in an educational source. However, I'm not complaining about Ludia using those designs because, in the end, those models are still for their games and uh, not for an educational source. Predators that they had to worry about. Like the skulls of other entelodonts, Archaeotheriums was long and had wide cheekbones. Their jaws could open very wide, which suggests that it shut them around other animals, maybe even other members of its own species. Oh, you're just showing entelodon now. These like things in dominance contests. At up to two meters long and more than a meter tall at the shoulder, Archaeotherium would have been a powerful animal. If it lived at the same time as people, it would have been able to tear a human to shreds in about three seconds, just so you know. Still nothing to do with the title that says even dinosaurs were afraid of this creature. You're only saying that humans are afraid of this creature, not dinosaurs. Number 2. Sarcosuchus. Yeah, Sarcosuchus appeared in Americano's list before. Sarcosuchus imperator is an extinct crocodiliform genus and a distant cousin of modern crocodilians. It lived in what's now Africa and South America during the early Cretaceous period, from the late Hovitarian to the early Albion. Let me correct you in that pronunciation. Hawterivian. 133 to 112 million years ago. It was one of the largest crocodile-like reptiles in the world, growing up to 31 feet long. It's known from two species, S. Imperator from the early Albion El Raz formation of Niger, and S. Harti from the late Hauterivian of northern Brazil. Other fossils have been found in Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, and Mali. Yeah, there's not much to say. Like, this guy is getting stuff correct. Between 1946 and 1959, French paleontologist Albert Félix de Le Pont led many trips to the Sahara, where he found the oldest bones. Some of the bones that were found were the skull, spine, teeth, and scutes. In 1946, the French found a nearly complete skull in Niger. Just another generic American pronunciation mistake. It's Niger, not Niger. If you're talking about Nigeria, then Nigeria, you can pronounce it like that, but Niger, not Nigeria. However, most of the rest of its body wasn't found until 1997 and 2000, when an expedition led by American paleontologist Paul Sereno found six more specimens, including one with about half the skeleton and most of the spine. Number 1. Meganeura. Above Megalodon and above everything, okay. There's nothing wrong about it. Right? Meganeura is a creature that will definitely scare people who don't like creepy crawlies. At this point, it's just another one of those boring clickbait videos that add nothing to it. With its wings that can be up to 28 inches wide, this is the largest flying insect ever. The longest wingspan actually belongs to that of Meganeuropsis. That's much bigger than most birds today. These giant flies were related to dragonflies and damselflies, and one of them, Meganeura, may have been the biggest flying insect ever. Again, the longest wingspan belongs to Meganeropsis. They were predators, and since they mostly ate other insects, they were pretty much like reaper drones to the insects they lived with. In the 1880s, French paleontologist Charles Brognard, Charles Brognard. found the first Meganeura fossil. He named it Large Nerved because the insect's huge wings have an amazing network of veins. In Derbyshire, England, another nearly perfect fossil was found in 1979, almost 100 years after the first one. The fossil of the first giant dragonfly is still on display at the Museum of Natural History in Paris. Many people think of it as the first giant dragonfly. Which is wrong, like there are certainly other giant dragonflies 
that lived earlier than the Meganura. Okay, so which of these had you hiding under your bed covers? If you were in charge of Jurassic Park, which one of these animals would you put in a dangerously unsafe enclosure that would certainly lead to it breaking out about 30 minutes into the movie? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. This is the end, okay. They got a lot of information correct, but they also got a lot of information wrong, outdated, or absolutely ridiculous. Maybe mostly outdated, though. This is a surprisingly good video coming from them. I didn't expect anything good, so that was a welcome surprise. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you all next time.